Start. Um, good evening and welcome to everyone joining us for another edition of KBTV, the Kennington Bioscope Live, or on repeat for those watching later via our YouTube channel. For some in our audience who may not be familiar with us, we are a group of film collectors, musicians, filmmakers and film historians who often in association with our esteemed colleague and patron, Kevin Brownlow, have been mounting regular silent film fundraising events with live music since 2013 at and for the Cinema Museum in Kennington, London, hence our name. 
temporarily denied live events on site as we find ourselves, we wish to bring a flavour of our programmes to you at home. And we've been delighted at the response, um, delighted to the response to our first broadcast and to the short silent films and documentaries we have shown thus far. And we appreciate very much all the online sharing and retweeting you have done to spread the word for tonight's show. Rooted as we have been of late to our immediate and near domestic spheres, I'm sure many of us have found ourselves reminiscing about past trips and favorite places, as well as dreaming of future travel. Perhaps we have been spending time looking over our own photographs and videos from fondly remembered holidays. I know I have and have found myself gazing on in wonder at travelogues on YouTube for places I have visited, allowing me to transport myself back to the streets I have walked and the views I have admired. Foreign or indeed any travel has been rendered unavailable to us for some months now, but of course the prodigious avenues of aviation on which we have become so reliant and accustomed were near unimaginable a hundred plus years ago. And the scenic, the Cine travelogue, right from the first days of film, opened up vistas and charming views for audiences who, in the most part, could not dream of ever really visiting. They also represented a respectable, refined and educational element of the burgeoning film market. And in amongst the diverting popular comedies and melodramas, captains of morality, critical of the still relatively new medium, could take some solace in the assured edification of the masses with these spectators' minds. Our first film, made in 1910, treats us to a graceful phantom wind by boat through the water waterways of Dordrecht in the Netherlands, a pretty Dutch town, southeast of Rotterdam, a location understandably favoured by painters. This dynamically hand-tinted nitrate film print came from the collection of our own cinema museum in 1999, was transferred and preserved to safety film the following year and digitally scanned in 2010, all by the Eye Film Museum, to whom we owe a great debt for the entirety of tonight's program with the kind assistance of chief curator Elif Rongen. Elif tells me that there is some debate as to whether the film was shot even later than listed, perhaps even after 1914, but further research will hopefully resolve this query in the future. But I'm very happy to tell you that Mr. John Sweeney has remotely recorded a synchronized live score for the film, especially for tonight's show. The second short in our programme will be accompanied live by Skype by that man behind the curtain, Mr. Cyrus Gabrish, the whiz operating all the controls tonight, pulling all the visual pieces together for our broadcast, including the glimpses of the Cinema Museum, which come courtesy of his own film footage. Our previous online screening included a highly topical aspect, that of remote viewing via video telephone, and tonight's two featured comedy shorts certainly both qualify again for their currency under the banner of social distancing. Gontran et la voisine en canoe, or Gontran and the Unknown Neighbour, made in 1913, is one of a significant series of Gontran comedies produced over three years by the Eclair Company. The film was shown at the Giornate del Cinema Muto Film Festival in Pordenone in 2018 in their Rediscoveries and Restorations programme. And I have here the notes supplied for that occasion by Ellie Frongen of the Eye Film Museum. Gontran, played by René Grayon, is so obsessed with playing the piano that he completely neglects his wife Arlette, or a leader as she is called in the Dutch intertitle. She moves to a house within hearing distance and begins to take piano lessons. Gontran is entranced by the music and starts courting this mysterious and talented neighbour from behind the garden fence, much to her satisfaction. Elif tells us that Grayon seems to have been a very prolific stage actor in the early 1900s at various theatres, including the Grand Guignon, where, according to film review number 13 of 1913, five or six times an evening, he switches between both tragic and comic roles with equal ease. Employed by Pathé as early as 1906, he moved to Eclair 
and was featured as the comic character Gontran between 1910 and 1913, when he was compared to Max Linder, as notes Richard Abel in his book, The Cine Goes to Town, French Cinema, 1896 to 1914. As played by Grayon, Gontran is an anxious, overconfident bourgeois type, not unlike Max, and his polished style of performance and facial appearance, large eyes, hair parted in the middle, and thin moustache, do remind one of Linda. In the United States, the series was first released using the Gontran name, but was changed to Nutty between 1913 and 14. Thank you, Elif, for those notes. Of course, it's worth mentioning that this film and its series director, Lucien Langeway, made many films with Max Linda himself, produced concurrent to these at the studios of Pathé Frere. To print, was preserved at Haga Film from an instant in 1990, and then where seemingly the only surviving copies
Graham, born in 1878, was mobilized in August 1914 as a military driver. And although he survived most of the war, he sadly died in January 1918, following the epidemic of Spanish flu at a field hospital in, in Epernay at the age of 39. Grayon rests in the National Necropolis of Firm of the Suite in Marne, Tomb 657, and his name appears on, on the war memorial in the town of Epernay sur Seine, where he lived before the war. Our next film, Over the Black Fence, also from 1913, again made on the cusp of the Great War, but this time stateside, is another held in the I Films Desmet collection and was made by the Edison Company, production number 7237, and released in the US on April the 16th, 1913. The American trade magazine reviewing the film tell us that Colonel Crompton, a bachelor, and his nephew Charles live in a house adjoining that of Matilda Scraggs, an old maid whose niece, Nell, is very much in love with the bachelor's nephew. The old folks are neighborly neighbors until one day the Colonel's dog bites the old maid's cat and the trouble begins. The Colonel is played by William Wadsworth, who worked prolifically for Edison, as did Alice Washburn playing Miss Scraggs. And the young, socially distant couple are portrayed by Harry Beaumont and Bessie Learn. Bessie, be Bessie had been a stage comedian from the age of eight and was another regular for Edison, also credited with writing one single scenario for her grandmother's wedding dress, in which she starred in the following year. Her featured film beau, Harry Beaumont, had left school early to join a theatrical troupe, was employed for his acting ability by Edison, became a director by the age of 27, working with a reputation for efficiency at several studios until he settled at MGM, where he directed John Barrymore and Mary Astor in Beau Brummel in 1924 and Joan Crawford in Our Dancing Daughters in 1928. And in the following year, Beaumont was also the director of MGM's first talkie, although a silent version was also made. It became the first in a torrent of musicals to come, the Broadway of Melody, sorry, the Broadway Melody, sorry, starring Bessie Love and Anita Page. There is, by the way, a super poster for the film Over the Fence from the Eye Collection, which you can see on our Twitter and Instagram page under its French title of La Palisade. The Fence, <laughs> under the title of La Palisade, The Fence, sorry. <laughs> John Sweeney has done us proud again, recording a live score for the film for us tonight, so thank you, John. And following on from that, we have an extra unadvertised film for you, for which Cyrus Gabrish will again provide live accompaniment. Artem Dupin Echappe Encore, Artem Dupin Escapes Again from 1912, stars Ernest Serves, a Parisian actor, director, producer, who directed and starred in scores of films featuring the comic exploits of Artem Dupin, a takeoff of the name Artem Dupin, the literary gentleman thief and master of disguise created by French writer Maurice Leblanc in 1905. The film series was produced by the Eclipse Company, a studio with a prodigious output, the fourth largest French film company. And this final film also comes courtesy of the Jean Desmet collection with its 900 plus films held by the I Film Museum and features another storyline to which many of us will doubtless relate, the desire to escape.
another day and thank you so much to John and Cyrus for your fantastic playing for your wonderful accompaniment but luxury to accompany this is fantastic thank you and thank you so much to the I Film Museum to Elise Longman particularly at the I Film Museum for the splendid use of their films and also the Cinema Museum um, for the Dutch film as well which originated there um, and thank you also very much to our friend and colleague Todd Higginson for all his work, preparing the film, selecting, preparing the films and their subtitles, especially for tonight's show, plus other duties besides, besides that. And please look out for future broadcasts from us. Look out on uh, social media, follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Please sign up to our mailing list on, you can find on the KennyTonBioscope.com for regular updates on when we'll be broadcasting next. And also many of you have very kindly said that you'd like to give us a donation. We have now set up a coffee page. So if you'd like to stand us a coffee, that would be lovely. And we look forward to having a real drink with you sometime. And um, you can find the link to that on the YouTube page and on the header of our Twitter page. But in the meantime, again, thanks to everybody, all the team, everybody at the Cinema Museum and Cyrus, John and Todd, um, and we'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. Love to see you. Bye. Baby, precious baby, did I do?